Hello. This question is addressed to Stephen Colbert for his monologue about the Rittenhouse trial and the verdict. And if any of Colbert's staff gets to see this, or indeed Mr Colbert himself, I want to ask you a question. Why do you want Rittenhouse hounded to death? I mean, are you, do you enjoy this idea? I don't know about your family circumstances, Mr Colber, but if you have any children, how would you feel about any of them being subjected to the sort of target on his back that you've put on him? It's truly a disgrace. And I will hold you personally responsible for anything that happens to that kid now. That's the first thing. And the second thing is a question to all of you. Where were the police? Because Kyle Rittenhouse should not have been there. The police should have been there, but they weren't. Why were you not asking that question? Uh, now, so here is, uh, for those of you who haven't seen the video, here it is. Big news on Friday was that after being accused of crossing state lines, killing two people and wounding another last year during a Black Lives Matter protest, Kyle Rittenhouse was acquitted on all counts. I'm sure Colburn knew exactly what he was doing. But it goes past you, so you don't quite notice it. He starts it off with, after being accused... And then he goes through a whole list. By the time he's got to the end of the list, you don't realise that what he's talking about is an accusation. And as a matter of fact, some of it's wrong as well, isn't it? And crossing state lines is nonsense when you consider he actually worked in that town and just happened to live in the next uh, area along which happened to be over a state line there's people who lived there probably didn't even don't even remember there's a state line there most of the time and you know that um mr colbert don't you now next bit okay yeah okay cards on the table i'm not a legal expert now I, I want you to know something else. The audience is hooting and laughing. We never get to see the audience. I don't know how many are actually there and how much of that is a bit of boosting from a sound, uh, sound effects uh, speaker. That's the first thing. And the second thing is there is a producer. I want you all to remember there's a producer there standing at the side shout doing that sort of thing and, and and miming clapping or maybe even holding up cue cards to tell the audience what to do and not necessarily but it does sound awfully staged to me and i have been at recordings because as uh, some of you know i used to write for the bbc and uh, i've seen recordings now sometimes uh, there's uh, most of the comedy shows i i, I wrote for they they were good enough, I like to think. They were good enough that we didn't have any producers doing that. which But they do it in some places, and I wouldn't be surprised if they were doing it here. So I want you to remember that. They aren't... They are only mindless morons in as much as they are following what they're expected to do. But they're there for a free night out, aren't they? So obviously they're going to be feeling very jolly and they're going to be wanting to give the the show it's money's worth okay next. yeah okay cards on the table i'm not a legal expert no and perhaps you're not a legal expert but you have a whole team of legal experts at your disposal and i'm quite sure that you know exactly what the legal situation is and how much you can say so i can't tell you whether or not kyle rittenhouse broke the law but i can tell you this if he didn't break the law we should change the law. Yeah, well, you see, I am actually with him on that. I don't think that a 17-year-old should be allowed to run around with a gun. In Britain, a, uh, you're allowed to join the army when you're 16, 
but you're not allowed to go into combat until you're 18. Meanwhile, you are given proper gun training and all the rest of it. I'm quite sure that, that Kyle Rittenhouse had appropriate training for using that gun. But he's still only 17 and he was in a phenomenally dangerous situation. It was bound to end badly. And I don't think he should have been given that responsibility or even allowed that responsibility. However, uh, you can say, yeah, this law needs looking at. We can discuss this law. I don't see anything wrong with saying that. But the fact is it was legal and the way uh, Colbert is putting it, it's... Um, He's making use of the situation uh, not in a, a logical, reasonable way. Let's put it that way. OK. That seems so oh, and, and yes, of course. And that there's the so applause again. Come on, come on, come on. If Emily Post said it was perfectly proper to go to Thanksgiving, drop trowel and leave your ass print in the pumpkin pie, I'd be like, OK, not illegal. Yeah, but that the seems simple. It's the way you're putting it, it seems simple. It really isn't simple. And you know it's not simple. And this guy is an intelligent bloke. And so he knows what he's doing. That's the worst of it. If a fool, if, if somebody in the pub were to say that over a couple of glasses of beer, you know, I, I would regard that as just, well, yeah, that's reasonable. But not somebody like Colbert, who is... I'm, I suppose, as sober as, uh, uh, well, I'm not saying he is sober, because I don't know, but he appears to be sober. And he is saying something he knows that there, there are answers to, but he's asking them in a situation where he is not going to get an answer or a contradiction. The standard, actually, the standard situation of a bully this is the position a bully puts himself in, a position where the, uh, the innocent or the, the, the victimised party has no way of evening up the argument. Yeah, it's a sophisticated bit of bullying, this. Emily Post wouldn't do that. And secondly, it is illegal. <laughs> It is actually illegal to do that. Uh, it's um, uh, probably public decency, uh, uh, hygiene law, you know, all sorts of things. So he's gone. Uh, it's called the fallacy of black and white, actually, isn't it? Uh, the, the fallacy of black and white is sort of, oh, uh, darling, this soup's too hot. What, you want it stone cold? That's a fallacy of black and white. And it, it doesn't make any sense. But then he's got this cheering crowd behind him and he can say yeah. what he wants. So Rittenhouse was found not guilty, but only a complete moron would celebrate this clear tragedy by making this guy a hero. Now, he calls this a tragedy. It is a tragedy. But it's a tragedy for Rittenhouse. Those guys were chasing him. They were trying to kill him, and don't give me any stuff about just chasing him. It's quite obvious. They were out to mash him to a pulp. And even the prosecution witness, the one who did survive, said he was actually pointing the gun when Rittenhouse shot him. And Rittenhouse didn't shoot him in the gut, which he could have done. No, it was, uh, it was definitely not a tragedy for those guys. And we can celebrate the fact that Rittenhouse survived and that he was found innocent after a totally spurious prosecution. Anyway, that's, that's enough of that. So uh, let's just go on with this a bit. I said Kyle shouldn't have been there and he shouldn't. Uh, a, a youngster like that should not be in that situation, but he was and he had the right to defend himself and the jury found him not guilty for that reason. And as I said, Colbert might have spoken rationally about 17-year-olds uh, with guns. I'd have been with him on that, but he chose to ignore the most important matter in the whole thing. Where was the law? Because at that point, Rittenhouse, that 17-year-old child, was the nearest thing to the law that was in that whole area. Isn't that a disgrace? A disgrace on America? A disgrace on American government? A disgrace on American voters? Well, 
the ones who voted the Democrats in anyway, because it's definitely a Democrat thing. Now, there were criminals prowling the streets, setting fire to things, uh, uh, well, beating people up, and there wasn't a police officer in sight. They were all hiding, or they were told to hide. Surely they were breaking the law by not being there. If the law needs changing, in my humble opinion, what needs changing is that the police are supposed to be out there protecting peaceful citizens. And I'm not just shouting at Americans now because I still, I bring this up at almost any opportunity because it's pertinent. Where were the police in Rotherham? Again, they were arresting fathers who were going to try to rescue their daughters. So it's, it's not just an American uh, sickness, this. I'm not suggesting it is. But because we're talking about Rittenhouse, then that's the focus of my argument. Now, the police are supposed to be out there protecting peaceful citizens. People who pay taxes to support the police and their political commanders. Oh, Mr. Colbert, why aren't you making more about this? Why aren't you talking about the ghetto neighbourhoods where police don't go and young black men shoot each other at a rate that is well known as absolutely horrific and, and not spoken about, especially by people like you, Mr. Colbert. 26 young men die every day. Now, you can say most of these are involved in crime, uh, they're not living very good lives, and uh, maybe you don't care. But they shouldn't have been in that situation in the first place. And if there was more law around, they may not have gone down that rabbit hole. Uh, 26 die, 104 are wounded, and sometimes wounds persist for the rest of your life. Uh, sometimes it can stop you walking. It's like that, that guy, whatever he's called, I've forgotten his name now, the one that Rittenhouse shot that survived, he's lost some of his arm. He'll be living with that for the rest of his life, this, this weakness in one of his arms. It will reduce a part of his life. Well, quite frankly, I'm not too bothered about that. He was shooting at somebody. But it shouldn't have happened. And he would have been safe for himself if the police had been there to stop him in the first place. The police were not intervening then and they don't intervene in the everyday war that's going on throughout America. As I'm speaking, some black kid is going to lose his life. That's the, the statistics we're talking about. Of course, other, other groups do lose their lives as well, but this is so pointless and it's so avoidable. Is it a lack of resources or a lack of interest or a lack of political support? But there aren't enough police doing what they're supposed to be doing. And where's Colbert sneering on that issue? Hmm? Uh, and as I mentioned before, another aspect of the Colbert monologue is that he's actually putting a target on Rittenhouse's back while everybody cheers. And not once the question, the really important question, where were the police? Why not treat yourself or a favoured relative or friend to these magnificent examples of merch? The mugs and t-shirts come in the Granny Opteryx design or Grambo with a firearm or the more deadly knitting needles. Go to www.grannyopteryx.com and whatever platform you're watching this on, please click like, subscribe and share, share, share.